Cause it won't be long until you're mine We are back here with the second half of today's games for the GSL Code S round of eight. Excuse me. I had a tickle in my throat. Uh, yeah, in the second half of I'm uh, sorry, I like to take my fingers out of your oh, throat. God, don't tickle my I'm ticklish in my throat. <laughs> um, no, but seriously, we are, uh, we got a really exciting TVT. Yeah. We got two guys that are just One of the most the exciting TVTs that you could uh, basically have. Yeah. Uh, they're both And they're two guys we don't get to top. see play. Like at this deep, this deep in tournaments? No, not no, really. They haven't really done it yet. Bomber has been all the rage in Korea for a long time for StarCraft Two. Bion has just kept working his way up, man. Got to admire this guy. He just keeps going. He's a grinder. He is. I mean, he He's... really, really trains hard. He doesn't. It's like each time he gets maybe like one part of the bracket deeper in the tournament, beats one extra good player, mm -hmm. and uh, I don't see this guy's uh, skill deteriorating anytime soon. Yeah, I, I don't think so. I think he's just going to keep getting better and better, and uh, you know, he's, I think, one of the only pro gamers that actually has switched races, went from Protoss early in GSL to Terran, and uh, here he is. Kid's sick, man. He's kicking Nothing ass. Nothing respect. Here he is. Take a look at him now. The Death Note Terran himself, Tasteless. Yun. And uh, as you can see, in his recent five sets, played quite a variety of different players. That is right, and all of them really top end, except for Legal Mind, who has now disappeared from the face of the planet. Yeah, I'd be surprised if we see more of him in the future. Definitely uh, not the caliber of some of these other players. Now, Bion, uh, he does do a lot of tech lab builds. Uh, he uses the Reaper more than most other players. Yeah. And uh, he's actually, Jaren. a lot recently, he has shown mech in TBT, which is yes. so exciting. I mean, not, e not every game, but uh, I hope that one day we live in a world in which mech is the everyday norm in TBT. I think that's coming very quickly, at least in Korea. Well, I live in a world where I just hope beer never costs money, you know, so. <laughs> we just keep our idealistic views, you know, maybe the world will change. Um, look, Bion... I love watching this guy play, and I have so much respect for him because of how much I've seen him kind of improve. He's grown along with he's, the show. Yeah, he's, yeah he's, he's, he's been with us the whole way. Now, here is another interesting character, Bomber. And he's one of the most popular players in Korea right now. In fact, most of our Korean audience um, is down here to see him play and to cheer him on. This is a guy, he had a lot of anxiety problems when playing on the big screen, on the stage, in the booth. And everybody was saying, this guy in practice is insane. Yeah. I mean, he was a great StarCraft 1 pro gamer yeah. that was ready to break out when StarCraft this, 2 came out. This guy overshadows Trickster in that statement. Because I know I said everybody was oh, talking certainly. about Trickster. No, this guy, everybody was talking about. Yeah. We never saw him. He was always stuck in code B, uh, somewhere around yeah. there. Now you he's know, suddenly it, shot through the ranks. Here he is in the round of eight. Funny thing that you say that, Tasteless. Trickster was actually this guy's team captain in StarCraft 1. A little yeah, fun how, fact. How funny is that? Yeah, man. And you know what? He doesn't look uh, too nervous at all. I mean, that might change in the game start up, but... No, he is uh, hes totally fine nowadays, man. He's getting better and better at these high-stress situations. Now, as you guys can see, <laughs> Terran versus Terran, Sick. actually, these guys have some very good results uh, from the recent sets. Yeah. I mean, 8-2 and two recently against as Bomber against Terran. Only losing games to MVP, who he beat 4-2. It's like ridiculous. It's so strong. Uh, losing just single games, one to Alive in a best of three, one to Teja, who's a very good up and coming pro, yeah. and one to Yoda, another very good up and coming pro. So, I mean, Bion has done we wonderful. Wow. You <laughs> just went there. there. Yeah. You just went there. I know we have a lot of Yun jokes, but I'm actually particularly proud of that one, of that Yun. <laughs> Our map is Terminus 3, the same map we saw the final game um, of Tricks against Lucera. It's a big open map. Drops are very important on this map because it's almost impossible to get a full-on hard contain. Yeah, it's, it's just it's so big. Difficult. And the corners, the all four corners of the map kind of allow you to uh, loop around them. Uh, so a lot more soft contains. Bion did eliminate uh, Belshire Beach. Our newest map and Bomber eliminating our oldest map, Metalopolis. That is quite true. I'm really surprised the middle office uh, being taken out by Bion. This is a very interesting choice by him. Huh. And now the countdown has started. 
It's game time. Yun against Bomber. Both these guys smiling for some reason. I didn't actually get to read the chat. Channel, but they must have said something to each yeah. other before the game started. And now it's loading. So let's get ready and see two of the most up-and-coming Terrans in GSL history. But only one's going to move on. Who's it going to be? We're going to find out here on the map term of history. Now over here on the far left, game number one, our Tech Lab Heavy Terran also introducing a lot more mech into TVT. He is... Beyond. Those headsets do change color depending on the APM actions per minute. That Razor headset's pretty cool, man. Pretty nifty. Yep. Was it done? Looks like a man is going to fall onto a telephone booth slash trash can. In that picture. Now, in the bottom location, the guy everybody's been talking about. Now is his chance to prove what everybody's been talking about here in the GSL. He is. She blowing us a kiss. She's blowing you a kiss. She's blowing you a kiss, Sartosis. Oh. Well, so she I, should I got know my, I only love StarCraft. I got my kiss blowing mirror out. It bounced off it like a laser beam and hit you. Well, I'm kiss rubber. It bounces off of me and it sticks to your kiss glue. <laughs> Pokyuki. That's bomber in Korean. So. Uh, both getting their barracks out. No Beyond gas is filled, yeah. No gas made yet here for Bjorn. Bomber has one, though. Yep. You know, I think one of my new favorite builds in TVT, because uh, I used to be more of a fan of this build Bjorn's doing, but I love a single gas uh, Banshee without cloak into Command Center, into Mech. That is my favorite build, I think, in TVT right now, Tasteless. What do you do if they just make one Viking? Then I run away. You run away? Yeah, yeah. What I do. Might you just stay in there and try to kill SCVs and lose it? Alright, now this SCV is gonna get. No, not Doesn't really it. see anything of merit. Uh, he does have that factory going down. The factory placement tells us yeah. that it's very likely gonna be Banshee. Double gas, and he sees it. He knows everything Let's going on. Let's see if he cancels that afterwards. He might. Well, uh, again, that factory placement. Really tells us that it's likely to be Banshee, especially with the sink of gas going up. Could even be cloaked Banshee from Bomber. Not this necessarily becoming Banshees. more popular. Yeah, I mean, fast Cloak expo into Cloak too. Banshee. Mm -hmm. Well, Cloak Banshees are just they're just so good in Terran versus Terran. I mean, they're pretty all right, although, man. You know, they don't have as much of a role sort of in the, the little bit past the mid game, but then when the late game starts up, if it's Mech versus Mech, you throw out Banshee into the mix, and then it becomes a Viking war. Yeah. All right, so. It is, in fact, going to be a Banshee. Will Cloak be involved? I don't, I don't know. Command Center is going up, finally, for Bomber. Nice little light defense here by Byung. And it's Banshee time. It is indeed. He's got 163 gas left. That might turn into Cloak in just a moment here with the double geyser. I'd be really surprised if it didn't. Yeah, that'd be otherwise a weird. Yeah, it's timed out. He's just like, nah, I just want like a ton of gas. I just want a build that doesn't make too, too much sense. I'm going to save it. Yeah. <laughs> you know? All right, Cloaking Field going up. So he is going Cloaked Banshee. Meanwhile, so basically these... No? Oh, I'm sorry, Artos, no. just go ahead. I have nothing to say. No, I'm... I was going to do filler. Go ahead. You're going to just fill time? Yeah. I was going to say, it looks like both these guys are basically doing similar builds, but one player uh, getting the expansion first. Yeah, it does in fact look like that. Uh, of course, what anti-air does Bion have? He's going to have to make some Vikings. He's going to make an uh, engineering bay right now, which is a good choice. Because without turrets up, he's going to have a very hard time. He's not going to have enough scans. He's not going to really... Uh, 
Yeah, and take a look here. He's actually, um, even, even if he was going to go Banshee, he's not anymore now that he scanned that. He's going to make one Viking when that finishes. Ooh, and I like actually that. Get Hellions. Yeah, Blue Flame. Yeah, it's I smart. like it, man. That's I really, really smart. Like All right, here he goes. Bomber hitting some SCVs. The Marines are at the expansion, so these are some free kills. Does not even have to cloak. Has more time to gain uh, cloaking energy. Cloak, well, it's not even quite done yet. It will finish up before anything really hurts the Banshee. And, and so now, you know, go. that depot placement couldn't be worse. You yep. should really sink those. Yeah, you should sink. For sure. He'll never sink to the same lows as you taste No, he would never do that. I can see his passion in his Banshee control. He lost his passion with his Banshee control just like the best foe you. <laughs> <laughs> he was probably nervous. All right, here we go. Another oh, Banshee coming Oh, in. my God. Oh, wow. If he picks oh! that off. Oh, you're oh kidding me. God. I really thought he was going to get it there. Yeah, and his other Banshee coming in. Only has a little bit of cloaking energy left, though. He cloaked it before even getting the natural where there were no units. So he's going to have to actually turn around and run, but he's not going to. He's just going for both, but a scan wasted. Oh, my God. This is so bad for Bjorn right now. Bjorn oh, no. is already this down still cloaked supply. over here, though, over that Willy Wonka chocolate factory thing. Yeah, actually, over. Uh, uh, just a funny, fun fact for you out there, all you out there, in StarCraft One. Korean Terran pro gamers were the absolute worst in the world at uncloaking cloaked units. Oh, I know. The absolute, without any doubt, worst in the world at it. All right, hold that thought. We got uh, the bitch coming here, killing up uh, more Marines. One does duck into the bunker. You know, I wonder if he even thinks that Banshee's still alive. I think he lost it, actually. I think he thinks he lost it, rather. Because the other Banshee has not even touched it yet, man, and it should have died, as we saw. Oh! Nice scan there. Takes out that Banshee as it flies right over. And he, does, he doesn't even remember he has that. I think eventually he'll be looking at the minimap and maybe see that. And be like, what? Oh, he's alive. It's the Amelia, Amelia Earhart. Earhart. <laughs> Whoa, what? Are you serious? All right, How did that, that, that is actually the moment I guess we are at Archon. Wow, That okay. was frightening. Oh, uh, wow, I'm creeped out right I now. I am, too, man. We both said that. I think we need some time off from each other. I know, man. I think we need to cast with other people for a while. <laughs> wow. All right, well, we have a Hellion drop coming up now for Bion. Bion trying to kind of get back into this game. He's about 10 uh, supply behind. Bam. That Marine is so dead. All right, so, Bomber has his third command center already done. He's got to feel very nice about that. Neither player really in the position to attack each other. The third command center of Bion is being made, but it's very much later. All right, here we go. Oh, oh <laughs> it's a ghost look down. Look at that. Oh, look at Bomber. Yeah, man. This guy. This guy is so good. You can tell when uh, StarCraft 1 Terran Pro Gamer is playing because you see stuff like that. That's exactly the type of stuff you always saw in Brood War and TVT. Yeah. It's like, oh, Vulture's coming there, LOL, and he just owns it with Sea Chang and some buildings. Yeah, that's right. Shit. Now, we have 41 SCVs for Byun, 48 for Bomber. So his economy is actually way ahead at the moment. His supply is up by quite a bit as well. He's actually up by 17 supplies, 64 to 81. Now, remember, guys, Byun is, uh, excuse me, actually rather Bomber. Well, I might have to say it in a minute. Those Hellions start to play a role in this game. Okay, so a Bomber's not just good at executing attacks and having good strategies. He's a monster at cranking out a ton of units. So yes. So for him to have this lead, it's going to be pretty tough for Bjorn to come back. Bjorn is interesting because he sort of has his own play style, and he's always improving and impressing us. And um, But at the same time, I mean, I don't know if he's going to be the, um, a match against somebody like Bomber. Yeah. And now, uh, Bomber's doing something I love. Did you see that? He was a raven. He's got a raven. I'm just so happy about it. Ravens are just a great unit to have in the matchup. If your opponent goes uh, Vikings with a mech build against you, your Vikings are going to win because you have a Raven. Uh, yeah, point goes, defense drone. If he goes anything else, it's quite helpful as well with point defense drone against Marauders. So, I mean, it's just it's a great thing to see. I'm so happy. I'm in a good mood. Here comes the drop again, but he wisely pulls out. In fact, there's a turret ring being made by Bomber. Which is extremely smart. Turrets in StarCraft 2 are like Turrets in StarCraft 1 on uh, some sort of performance-enhancing drug. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, I mean, it's, it's a great move to do. Well, you know, Turrets in StarCraft 2 are even scarier than Turrets in StarCraft 1. 
Well, that would be the performance in yeah. the part. That's exactly what I'm saying. It's just, it's it's so, they're so strong. And now he's going into mech play, although <laughs> uh, Bjorn did scan and identify that. Wow, and he's even adding in some Thors. That's going to help him out in any Viking battles that do occur. Well, you know what I think he's done right now is he's realized that, you know, the Banshee Viking late game stuff mm -hmm. plays such a role. Just prepare for it early on, especially yeah. when you're already ahead. And in low numbers, uh, the... The Thors are going to be quite nice against Siege Shanks. You know, they. Yeah. If you have like a trillion Siege Shanks, obviously the Thor is going to be pulverized. But if you have just a few, that guy absorbs a lot of hits before he Whoa, dies. Oh, weird. Ooh. Mass barracks now elsewhere. Yeah, that's He might very actually go in for, into a tech switch here. Yeah. And tech switches, they can be so deadly. In fact, he is getting plus one for both tanks and marines. So, uh,. Whether that's going to be Marauders or Marines, I think it's probably just going to be a crazy Marauder switch just all of a sudden. He might just try to equalize the armies in mech versus mech. Just I have them run into each other and then switch over, snap your fingers into Marauders. And just all of a sudden he has way more units than his opponent who's going mech and takes a long time to remake the army. So a move like that could be very nice. Uh-oh. Oh, look at this. Auto Turrets coming down here. That is awesome. Landing his Vikings as well, deciding, no, I want to kill all these Siege Tanks off. Bomber even landed his command center, takes Siege Tank hits. Yeah, that I don't was know why, so subtle but good. I don't know why Byun was out there sieging. That was a little bit weird, and Bomber crushed him for it. Bomber actually might be able to go kill him. I don't know if he's going to do that. Yeah, but if, if you, wait, we'll get a shot of uh, he's up 40 entrance. supply, man. It's actually pretty heavy, the, the difference in... Uh, supply in well, just the amount of stuff they have. It's 125 to 170, so he'll be maxed in about you know, two or three minutes here. Yep. Uh, I mean, he's just way out macroing Dion at this point. 75 SCVs to 62. Overall supply, 134 to 174, so that's 40 more. Oh my god. And Dion is kind of just sitting in his choke. You know, and that's a weak position to be in. He can actually come over and hard contain that choke. And that Easily. plus... Uh, the fact that he actually has like Vikings and a Raven behind his natural, I mean behind his main base with missile turrets up you can't drop out that way, that leaves only one direction for Beyond to go and look at that, it flies right over that Banshee that he forgot existed the Amelia Earhart Banshee Yeah, somewhere it is alive on an island but no one knows about it <laughs> 200 years old now like. <laughs> all right um, and it, uh, hanging out with Tupac like, man yeah man, with Tupac and <laughs> it went Biggie Smalls, yeah. Exactly. Um, well, Bjorn has to do something. I don't know if he can do anything, though. I mean, how are you going to get out of here? You know, with Let's all those Ravens, works. he might be able to do it. He's got to walk more forward than that. That's actually too far back. It's a siege line. And his back siege shank's not doing anything right now. If he had moved a little bit more forward, he could have broke out of here much more cost efficiently. Wow. But as is, he's, I mean, he's pretty much broken the contain, but definitely a little misstep we, there. We missed something over here. The Hellions uh, denied the expansion lane at the upper left. Oh, right wow. now, Bomber at 175 supply, 122 here. Look at this. Gun. And he's equalized oh, a lot of Oh, look at this. It's so beautiful. Then he switches into Marauders. Oh, his stim is just about to finish. Finishes just after the time he wanted to use it. Just His timing was just seconds off there. Very interesting tech switch stasis, but still going a lot of tanks, a it's, lot of aliens, and a lot of marauders. Well, you tend to get uh, additional minerals when you're on those those three bases. Yes. If you're going max, so he just invests into the uh, all that barracks and everything there earlier. <laughs> oh, don't land it. Dude, actually, he's looking like a macro terror right now. Look at this. Oh, my God. Command centers. He's actually going up. He's already on five bases. Beyond is struggling to mine out of his Bomber board. is growing like the blob. Let me tell you something, then Hellion Harass did not matter. <laughs> no. He is actually getting so far ahead. Does not care. And, well, I mean, Bomber's in a great spot. He's even, I mean, this is, he's playing tempo-based right now. It's beautiful to see. To switch out of mech into a tempo-based play with these Marauders. Just saying, well, I'm momentarily, I have this funny army that's going to be so hard to kill. Look at this. Hellions, Hellions to take the damage. The Marauders come in here and clean up the rest. That's so many siege tanks taken out oh right now. Oh my god. This, this is, is actually one of the most impressive TBT games. Dude, Bomber. I've seen coming for Bomber. Bomber is wow. unfathomably good. This is just unreal. We've never seen anything like this in StarCraft 2. Lady Mules now. He wants him to get out. GG. Whoa. 
Oh my god, pretty insane. Bomber's like, whoa. That is the guy that just did that. God, Damn. Was that good, man. That was insane. That was so cool. He he did there were so many different parts of his play. He had the early game technical harass with the cloak banshees. He had uh, the double expansion behind that, realizing, oh, I have Banshee tech. He really doesn't have too much anti-air. I can, I can double expand. He went into having uh, some nice siege tanks and was ready to play out a kind of normal mech, mech game. Bion moves out of position for one second. He crushes that little army, puts up a very cost-efficient contain, and switches into tempo-based play while going up to five bases. It was beautiful. I am so impressed wow. with the mass barracks. Oh, Just, it so it's like good. at any moment when you see that you have that mech lead, what do you do? You just surprise them with a bunch of marauders because mm -hmm. the first thing they're going to they're going to try to make to catch up is going to be siege tanks. Mm -hmm. Our next map is Zelnaga Caverns. Will this game look different? Will Bion be able to come back? You can see Bion almost in shock uh, from that game. Bion, he's he's got that I know I'm a badass right now look on his face. Seriously, he's he's. he's Really looking very scary. That was one of the scariest. Yeah. Terran versus Terran. Uh, yeah, games I, I think saw. it was the, the best play by one player. Bomber. Yeah, I actually agree. All right, it's time for game number two. Can Beyond engineer a comeback in what is almost looking like a uh, invincible opponent, Bomber? We're going to find out here on game number two in the GSL Code S round of eight. Casted by Tasteless and Artosis. Tasteless, the casting archon here in Seoul, Korea.